So to be completely honest, until about 30 seconds ago, I had no intention of making this video. To be even more completely honester, I guess, I just didn't think you'd be interested in this sort of thing. Really, I still have my doubts, but I guess we'll find out. What I mean is I'm in the shop every single day. So there's a lot of stuff that I do that I just don't even bother to film. However, I was talking to my wife about it, who let's face it is much smarter than I am. And she seems to think that I should be filming some of this. I mean, you probably do deal with a lot of the same day-to-day -day shop stuff that I do. So here we are. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about a subject that I happen to be exceptionally bad at, brazing. Before we go any further, let's make one thing very clear. Crystal clear, if you will. This isn't a crystal, by the way. It's more of a brick. Until about two days ago, my success rate on brazing attempts was hovering somewhere right around 0%. That's zero with a zero. This is literally what I was practicing on just two days ago. To say that things weren't going well, I think would be a bit of an understatement. And it was pretty much completely by accident that I just stumbled my way into understanding two fundamental concepts that literally turned out to be the keys to success. In the span of about two minutes, I went from this to this, and this, and this. I guess you could say that I had a bit of a breakthrough. So that's what I'm gonna share in this video. My brazing keys to success. But before we get started, I think that we should go over some basic vocabulary and supplies. I know I can feel your excitement, but I think it's important. I mean, maybe you don't know. After all, you are watching a guy who just admitted that he knows nothing about brazing tell you about brazing. So what is brazing? Well, I like to think of it like super glue for metal. It's a lot like welding, but it's also a lot not like welding. Let me explain. It all started with the invention of... No, there is too much. Let me sum up. Much like welding, brazing allows you to stick pieces of metal together. The difference, however, is in how you go about doing that. Whenever you're welding two pieces of metal together, part of that process actually involves melting the base material of those two pieces that you're trying to join. All of that molten metal then swirls together and bonds those two pieces kind of into one single piece of metal. With brazing, however, instead of melting the actual material of the pieces of metal that you're trying to stick together, you're gonna to be melting a filler material onto those pieces of metal. That filler material then flows onto the two pieces that you're trying to join and sticks them together a lot like glue. So that's the basic gist of it, I guess. And this is of course useful because it allows you to do things like stick together dissimilar metals or metals that are either really difficult or impossible to weld with other methods. Like for example, cast iron repair, which also happens to be the entire reason for this video, but we'll get to that. Anyway, let's talk about supplies. Starting with the filler material. Now, there are a lot of different types of filler materials. And I think I may have mentioned this already, but I'm no expert. So this is gonna be a very brief and <laughs> rudimentary overview of the subject. When most people think of brazing, they probably think of bronze brazing. That's what these are here. These are bronze brazing rods. So these are composed of primarily copper and tin. These rods here are exactly the same, except they're already covered in flux. We'll talk about flux in just a minute, but the important thing to remember for now is that these and these are bronze brazing rods. Bronze filler material is going to be the cheapest type of filler material. I think it's probably gonna be the most common, and it's also likely to be the first material that a beginner or home shopper is going to buy because of those two reasons. However, bronze also happens to take the most amount of heat to liquefy, and when it does liquefy, it has the lowest flowability. This basically means that when it turns into liquid, it's gonna be more viscous and isn't gonna run quite as readily. This filler material here is very similar to this, 
However, all of these have one additional material added. That material is silver. These have 15% silver, 50% silver, and 56% silver. Now, of course, as more silver is added to the filler material, it's gonna become more expensive. However, as silver is added, the filler material is also going to require much less heat to liquefy, and when it does liquefy, it's going to flow much more readily. And this brings me to my first important point or my first key to success. The type and quality of your filler material really, really matters, like a lot. And depending on the type of torch you're using and the temperatures that you're able to reach, the type of filler material can make all the difference in the world. Next, let's talk about flux. This one's super easy. Um, just use the right kind of flux. You can see that this one says stay silv on it. So obviously this is gonna be flux for silver brazing. This one here is just a generic white flux. Uh, this is what you're gonna use for bronze brazing. Um, the fluxes, when you buy them, they'll tell you generally what types of metals they're good for. For instance, the silver brazing flux, there's a white flux and a black flux. I believe the same thing for this uh, more generic bronze flux. In general, the way that I understand it is the black fluxes are good at higher temperatures. So if you're brazing something like carbide or something like that and you need to get it to a really high temperature, you probably want to use a black flux. Um, aside from that, both of these are white and they work fine for everything that I do. The last thing that you're gonna need is of course a torch, which brings me to my second and final key to success. Get a good torch. Get a good torch with a selection of tips that are gonna allow you to control the heat. You wanna control both the amount of heat that you're putting out and also where that heat's going. This is gonna make a huge difference in the ability to melt that filler material and put it where you want it to go. I'm sure you've seen one of these before. pretty easy to see the difference between those two flames. A torch like this is gonna put out much lower heat over a much larger area, which just makes it more difficult to control. Also, I don't think that you're ever gonna be able to melt bronze using a torch like this. So keep that in mind as well. Get yourself a good torch that lets you control and direct that heat. All right, let's stick some metal together. Just using a couple of old razor blades for this first demo, you can see that I've already given them a lick on the belt sander and taken them down to bright clean metal. You definitely want to braze to bright clean metal, so physical cleaning should be the first step. Next, I'm just going to apply some flux directly to where I want the filler material to flow. I'm applying that flux with the filler rod, and now we are going to apply heat. You can see that I am kind of feathering that heat onto and off of the workpiece, just trying to control it. These razor blades are thin. I don't want to soak them too much. As I do this, I'm paying attention to the behavior of my flux and the color of the workpiece. I'm looking for that flux to begin to kind of flow out across the workpiece, and that should happen at right around the same time that the work starts to begin to glow red. Once that starts to happen, I know that I should be hitting the temperature to melt that filler material, which is exactly what you see here. And as soon as that filler material starts to melt, I'm gonna pull away the heat. I want the filler to freeze in place and not either overheat or just flow everywhere and make a big mess. Now I'm moving on to the next area and it's just repeat the same thing. You can see as that flux starts to flow out and up the workpiece and it starts to glow red. The filler material melts and I immediately pull away the heat. And that's pretty much the entire gist of it. I mean, you can see I'm no expert or anything. It doesn't exactly look great, but the important thing is that these are now braised together and they're not gone anywhere. Once you begin to understand those two key concepts, the filler that you use matters and you need to be able to control your heat, everything else just kind of flows from there. Get it? 
flows from. Finally, it is time to address the entire reason that I actually made this video, which is of course to attempt to repair this cast iron vise. To do this, I'm going to be using some of this solid bronze filler wire, which means that I am also going to be changing torches. This particular torch is an acetylene-only turbo torch. The way that this torch works is it uses a single bottle of acetylene as the fuel, and the torch tips themselves all have these little air holes. These air holes allow the acetylene gas to pick up and mix with some air from the surrounding atmosphere, as it travels up through the torch. This basically gives it a bit more kick and a bit of extra heat when it comes out of the hot end. This torch can technically melt bronze. Um, however, it's kind of difficult to do it. Depending on how big the piece is, it can take quite a while to get it up to the required heat. And it can also be kind of difficult to hold it at that temperature while you're trying to braise which is exactly why I'll be adding a little bit of oxygen to the mix and switch into my oxyacetylene brazing torch. This torch just puts out much more heat and this is definitely what I prefer to be using if I'm gonna be trying to braze with bronze. All right, so like any welding job, the first thing you wanna do is prepare the surface. This means beveling, making room for your filler material, cleaning up any excess paint or oil, etc. By the way, this is my setup to hold the part in place until I get the initial tack down. It's just a vice grip that I've attached to one of those Noga Flex arms. Sort of like a third hand, I guess. It works out pretty good. Because the part is made of cast iron, I do want to make sure that I preheat the entire part before I get started. Cast iron does not do well with rapid temperature changes, so slowly bringing the entire part up to temperature uh, should hopefully just help to prevent any new cracks or fractures from forming during the brazing process. It's time to fire up the torch now, and I'm going to do my best to dial in a nice, easy, small, neutral flame here. Something that's going to give me a bit of control. I would really like to try and avoid putting too much heat into the part, but, you know, I guess we'll see how that works out. One thing to mention is that when you apply flux for bronze brazing, you're going to apply it to the filler material and not to the part. You do that by heating up the filler with your torch and then just dipping it right in the flux. And from here, the process is, you know, pretty much the same process as with silver brazing. However, I will admit that I do find it to be more difficult with the bronze brazing. You're dealing with a lot higher temperatures when bronze brazing. And for me, I find that it's much, much harder to control those temperatures. Um, you're going to hear a pop here in just a minute. That pop is basically me getting the filler material way too hot. And, I, you know, I just struggle. I swing between not putting enough heat into the part and putting way, way too much heat into the part. You know, at the end of the day, I think it just really comes down to practice. Brazing is definitely one of those skills that just requires a bit of finesse. Being familiar with your torch, understanding how to choose the correct size tip for the job at hand, these things all require what feels like a bit of an innate understanding of how things are going to go before you even turn on the gas. And that's the sort of thing that just comes with practice and experience. However, in spite of the fact that I was making those beginner mistakes pretty much the entire time, I was able to finally get through it, work my way around the entire part, and finish up the repair on this vise. All that's left now is to let the part cool down and see how I did. Because it's cast iron, I'm wrapping the part in this insulated firewall to slow the cooling process as much as possible. So I'll just leave it wrapped in this overnight and check on it tomorrow morning. And here are the final results. It's the next day. I did go ahead and clean it up just a little bit. I think that it came out decent, you know? Um, obviously, it's not perfect but I think it's gonna work. It's gonna do the job, which is the most important thing. And considering that this is literally my first ever successful cast iron brazing repair, I'll take that as a win. 
And I guess that's about it for this one. This has definitely been a little bit of a breakthrough for me. I have attempted this sort of thing in the past and I don't know, I've just never quite been able to get it right, which is why I figured that I would share this, share my experience and, you know, kind of share what finally started working for me. Maybe that's been helpful, maybe it hasn't. If you do have experience with this sort of thing and you have anything that you want to add or, you know, you want to correct anything that I've said in the video, definitely put it down in the comments below. I would certainly like to hear it. I'm sure that others would like to as well. Brazing seems to sort of be one of those things that looks really easy when you see somebody who knows how to do it, do it. But if you're anything like me, maybe you've found that in actual practice, it's not quite so easy. Anyway, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video very, very soon.